Hey everyone, I'm Jen Houston from the Artsy Fartsy Gallery here in Canada and welcome to tonight's uh, airing, taping, whatever, of cough, coffee and cards. Now, I'm not drinking tea, but like I nor normally am, I've got a nasty headache, so I've decided to drink some water. Maybe I haven't, you know, had enough today, and so hopefully that'll calm things down, but I want to hear what you're drinking tonight. I want to hear where you're from. I want to uh, say hello to you. So when you pop on, let me know you're there. All right. So I've got uh, lots of people back home in Manitoba that have no power. You guys had that big nasty snowstorm. This is so odd for uh, Sept or October. Pardon me. You did have snow in September though. October is so early for snow for you guys. Oh, it's horrible. So yes, my parents are sitting downstairs in the basement with, thankfully they have a fireplace. And so, uh, whoops. So they've got the fireplace on and then mom dug out this old coal lantern and she added some oil, oil, coal, oil, coal oil lantern, I guess. It, I think that's what she called it. And so, uh, yep, they're downstairs. Hi or Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's so true there, Jen. <laughs> Although it gets us into the Christmas spirit for making cards, doesn't it? <laughs> Which maybe is a little helpful because, you know, the, this holiday catalog comes out so early in October and it's a little, <gasps> you just got over the summer and here we're dealing with Christmas. So, yes. So did, did you lose your power too, Jen? My parents are sitting downstairs. My poor dad has a colonoscopy tomorrow. So, of course, he's running to the bathroom. So, my mom, you know, lit him a candle in the bathroom so he could see what he's doing. <laughs> but, oh, so my mom said it's quite boring, you know, sitting there staring at the fireplace. And, you know, they don't really chit chat overly much. So, but, and my poor, poor tenant who's uh, kind of looking after our house while we're over here, she uh, had opened the garage door and uh, couldn't get it back down because the power went out. So, <sighs> yeah, struggle, 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 hey? Oh, man. So hopefully yours is melting quite quickly. Ours is probably about half gone, our big snow dump there. Um, it was, I think, two degrees today. And um, tomorrow it's supposed to be seven, so I bet you it'll be all gone by tomorrow. So I'm hoping that for the same, that the same goes with our, my Manitoba friends. For two minutes that was enough baking and sewing <laughs> well oh thank goodness for you because yeah I know um, <clears throat> did you ever meet Debbie I don't know if you did Jennifer um, but she was about four and a half hours without power today so that's no good but uh, huh well we got some baking and sewing done today what'd you bake I guess your sewing machine needs power, doesn't it? We had no hydro like that two weeks ago and it was terrible. Some were 24 hours. Oh my goodness, with no hydro. Wow. I know we have a planned power outage here on October 11th. Um, they're doing some wiring upgrading and whatnot, whatever. So we've been, you know, pre-warned that it'll be off for eight hours. And so <laughs> when you, you know, leave your apartment or your condo um, of course the hallways are pitch black because there's no windows uh, the um, parkade is pitch black <laughs> so I think we're gonna you know go to Calgary that day maybe I don't know we'll have to think of something and our dogs get so freaked out when they you know how the alarms keep beeping and they because they don't know what's going on but oh, chocolate chip cookies you're lucky I live many, many miles away. Or I may be coming over to your, your doorstep for some cookies. Oh, that sounds delicious. I saw the quilt pattern that you're making. That's pretty nice. I love those colors. The blue and the oranges. That was really pretty. You're so talented. Goodness. Have you made lots of quilts? I don't even know. Now, how'd you get started in quilting? I 
have still got this gunk in my lungs. I don't know when it plans to, you know, exit, but my cold is long gone, but this silly lung business is no fun. Anyways, um, the stamp set that we have been kind of working on this week has been the Buffalo Check stamp set, and I am loving it. It makes such a neat um, background stamp for so many things. And so I'm gonna show you two projects tonight. Thank, uh, thanks, this week brought Clint's brother's clothes. I don't know what that means. I probably asked a question. I threw out many questions at you and now, now I can't remember what I asked you. I'm sorry about that. So we're using the Buffalo Check stamp set. I'm loving it. I made so many backgrounds, so many fun little cards here. I'm going to have two projects, pardon me, and uh, let me show you what the first one's going to look like. To make memory kill, oh, quilt he passed in June in accident, that one I'm honored, but kind of hard at the same time, yeah, I bet, I bet. That's neat, a memory quilt, that's, that's an awesome idea, I like that. But yeah, that would be hard every time you looked at it. All those memories would come back. But definitely a nice keepsake to pass down to your family for sure. Wow. So here's my little pumpkins I made. Using the Buffalo Chick stamp. <laughs> that reminds me, I have to plug in my, uh, my um, glue gun. <clears throat> I'll try not to burn down the condo, but <coughs> never know. All right, so here's the li these little pumpkins. I just I think they're so adorable, and uh, I'm gonna put them kind of at our front door, and uh, may I'm gonna try and find a little basket for them. I just think they're so cute, and of course I used the buffalo stamp set for that. All right, so let's get rolling. I put all our supplies in a box. Um, remember what goes with what and this is totally the wrong no that's right the wrong box whoops let me grab the other box okay let's put that in there this one. okay so I have some those are terribly cute <laughs> I like how you said that and I just made it by, um, you know, the different sizes by making the um, strips, I guess, longer and shorter and a little bit narrower on these, uh, the littlest guy for sure. Because otherwise it would have been pretty bulky, but I know, I think they're so adorable. And um, I had seen pumpkins done like this, not with the fancy leaves and whatnot, but just a pumpkin. And someone had made an apple with the red check pattern for teachers so I thought oh that's cute I gotta make these so I'm just gonna use some whisper white cardstock and um, it is measured I think at four and a quarter by five and a half if I remember right <clears throat> and I have some pumpkin pie ink so I'm just gonna ink up this stamp of course if you saw the video earlier this week you know that since this is such a humongous stamp, you lay it facing up and you ink this way. That way you can see um, if you've got ink all over the stamp or not. All right, that's looking good to me. And you're not gonna pick up the stamp because that's too heavy, you're gonna fiddle, it's not gonna get on straight. So you lay your paper down on top of the stamp, get a scrap piece of paper, fold it over, and just rub it on top. Make sure you get all the edges. All right, I think that's good. Now I'm going to do a second one because I'm not sure if I'll have enough little strips for. Um, there we go. Enough uh, paper to make enough strips. So I'm going to ink this up again. Thank you. 
I saw Niles's pictures outside there playing in the snow. I'm sure he likes it. <laughs> Did you get him to shovel? So I'm just rubbing on top here of this scrap paper. So that way I keep my hands clean. Otherwise there would be ink everywhere. And ta-da! All right. I'm going to put this aside. Actually, I'm going to wipe it off with a baby wipe. I have been using the Simply Shammy, but because this is so humongous, it's just, it's too awkward with the Simply Shammy. So I'm just using baby wipes. Like the good old days. Okay, hopefully that's kind of covered off, uh, taken off. Okay, and now we're gonna do some cutting. <clears throat> Actually, I'm gonna close my pumpkin pie ink because otherwise it's gonna be all over me. I love the Stampin' Trimmer. trimmer. Do you think more about that farm track? <laughs> This in red would go great with that truck. You know it. And you know what? When I saw this, because I know that the designer series paper that matches with that truck has check patterns in it. And I thought, oh, this would match with Jen's, you know, truck. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know who I'd give that to. I don't have like men that like trucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. Okay, I think I'm gonna do, how much is this here? Five, four? I think I'm gonna go a little, I'm gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch. I love the Stampin' Trimmer because it would be so hard to try and line up this paper along here and try and trim this way so they have thought about this oh there's some brilliant people who work here that you can have most of your paper on this side to hold and you can line up at the three quarter oh you gotta see three quarter inch this way and cut so much easier okay i'm gonna want to trim about i don't know 10 12 strips we'll see how many we get here so this is three <gasps> I was gonna do just a minute maybe I'll do that on the other ones I was gonna add some um, extra lines like I showed today Darn. okay I'm gonna do that from now so in today's video I don't know if anybody saw but I did um, some extra checks on the pattern oops country I love that with the pumpkin color too. Very, too very country it is. Yes, very you know, country chic. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the terms. <laughs> so the way I do it, I use this grid paper. I'm loving this grid paper, and you put it in between the squares on top and underneath. That way you can line up your ruler along that line. There we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna skip one because I have the darker version, yeah. Uh, skip one, line it up, put a ruler mark. There, and one more. Going this way. Okay, and I'm gonna, while I have this light green out, well, this is um, light old olive, by the way. I forgot to tell you. I'm gonna go this first one here, the long way, and line up my ruler. I'm gonna skip one and line up the ruler. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and do that same thing with the dark old olive uh, stamp and blend 
So while I've got it this way, we'll just go this way. Just adds a little something extra, these little lines in the in the check pattern. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip and do the ones that I skipped. Now I don't know if you saw my video, but they had I tr did one with just one color, all the checks. I did one with two colors, like I'm doing right now, and I also did one with four. So all sorts of varieties. Now, okay, there's that. I think I'm going to do the same thing to this one because I definitely won't have enough um, paper. So here we go. We'll line this up again. Okay. How's your leg doing? Any better? Any worse? Is it nice to have the stitches out? I heard you went to physio and they told you, ah, ah, ah. Not supposed to be stepping on it too much. That's no fun. How's that scooter thing? Does it does it work well? Because with all my knee surgeries, I've all you know those crutches are. When you're big. Mm -mm. It's just impossible <laughs> lifting all that weight goodness although I guess if you have knee surgery you can't really bend your knee that much maybe that wouldn't work how do those um, boots work <clears throat> like how does it keep your foot and ankle and everything still is it on tight or is it, how do they work? All right, I'm done with the dark old olive. Yeah, stitches out. Nice there, hey? Okay, now back with the light old, oopsie, old olive. So this is the part that takes the longest, that's for sure. Then once we have this all done and cut, the assembly's really quick. It's tight, but it also has air, so nice. Okay, but like why, why can you walk on that? How, or how can you walk on that um, at, or, and it doesn't, you know, your bones don't move around, how, do, how does that work? reason why I'm asking is because my foot still kills. Hi, Diane. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Yes, we're doing the buffalo check. <laughs> How are you, Diane? Did you uh, lose any power today? You guys got some snow. Wet, heavy snow there. Lisa, do you have snow where you live? Jen knows Diane, I think, I hope, okay, all right, back to the stamp and trimmer, let's try this again here, so I'm not sure, but this time I don't have the boot, oh, that'd be good, 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 okay, so uh, if you've just hopped on, um, this white, whisper white paper is measured at four, and I four inches and I'm going to actually cut it at three cut strips at three quarter inches I had started and I forgot that I was gonna put the the uh, extra check pattern on there no don't rush that <laughs> yeah 
It's come really early for us here in Canada. I don't know what's happening here. Um, back home where I'm from, Manitoba, where these ladies are from, um, they had like a stinking hot summer. And um, man, <laughs> I don't know if the weather gods heard you, but you know, maybe you were complaining, that guys were complaining too much about, you know, the heat or something. <laughs> and now, surprise, it's horrible. We got our big dump, but it's been so warm that about, you know, I would say half of it's already melted today. And tomorrow's supposed to be seven degrees, so it'll, oh shoot, got a dud. I'm in the middle of a beautiful fall right now. Temp's about 60 degrees. Oh, <laughs> that sounds lovely. Wow. All right. Now I'll try not to make any more boo-boos here because I don't want to have to color up another one. Let's see how many we've got so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten will be fine. Okay, I'm just going to trim this wee last bit off. So, for those who jumped on um, a little later here, Although your snow pictures look so beautiful. It is pretty beautiful in the mountains. And I must say the snow here, it comes in such huge flakes because it's so wet and heavy here, right? It's, it, the temperature isn't super cold. We're back home in Manitoba, it's just little, you know, like kind of like rain and it just whoosh, like a big sheet. So this, you know, just falls so beautifully. So we haven't been able to see the mountains for the last couple days because of the, you know, snow and the the clouds and whatnot but if you hopped on a little later this is what we're making tonight along with a card a little later but aren't those cute little pumpkins so they're made with the buffalo check so I did all sorts of little sizes wee teeny little guy oh, I think they're cute I'm gonna put them outside our condo door here in a little basket I think it'll look cute for for Thanksgiving so, all right, we have our little strips. I have 10 of them. And I'm gonna get my, my foam pad here. We line up all these. And I'm gonna take my poker tool. That's not the official name for it. Uh, what's it called? Oh, Lisa, help me out. What's this thing called? Um, anyways. And so near the end, you're gonna kind of poke a hole through them all. And so I like this foam pad because if you go a little too far, uh, it's not gonna, you know, wreck your table or. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of slide it up and down, make sure that it's nice and squished. All right, and so now while I have that hole, I'm gonna take some of my old brads. Now, I just had them from before, but you're welcome to use whatever brads you can find in the store. Um, I'm just gonna use some brown ones. Uh, I'm gonna try poking this through again just so that I can line them all up nicely. Man, did I do that with my fingers? I look like I've been eating cheesy. <laughs> Paper piercer tool, yes, thank you. Piercing tool. All right, now I'm gonna use this paper piercing tool again to press back those brad tongs. All right, okay, so you have your little brads in there and I'm just gonna kind of help it along a little just to make it so it's not so difficult. All right, and now I'm gonna take the paper piercer tool again and to the other side. Poke it through kind of in the middle there. On the end. Did I get it? Almost. Ouch, don't poke yourself. <laughs> it's pokey. All right. Now here's where we put this together. So I fan out the little strips. Here, we'll go to this side. It's much more pretty. 
Make sure you don't have any doubles because sometimes they stick together. So we've got to kind of fanned out a little. It doesn't have to be precise or anything. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to need another little brad and start to put the brad through uh, one of the strips. And then you're going to come behind and just kind of layer them up onto that brad. see what I'm doing. Whoops. So two more. Not a gen piercer, no. <laughs> Although it works good for that. Oh sheesh. Okay. Of course all the ones I made this afternoon went smooth. And now this one's going to be pain in the butt. Almost got it. Last one. Okay, so I've got them all in there. And once again, I'm going to use the Gen Piercer, otherwise known as the Paper Piercer tool. And I'm just going to squish that brad flat. I'm actually going to go in with the other side to help that along. And... Now you can fan these out a little more so they're kind of um, not, they're kind of in a clump on this side, but not the other side, right? So just kind of fan them out so they're all kind of even. Okay. And then I just kind of give it a little <laughs> squish to help it kind of lay down a little bit. All right, I like those colors. Okay, so now what I'm doing for the leaves is that I am, I've got the, oh sheesh, it's the framelits that go with the Rooted in Nature stamp set. And so the cool part about those is that it comes in two sizes for one. So it's got the, the framelits like you've seen all the time, you know, that'll cut out either the stamped image or just a piece of paper um, but the cool thing is that it comes with this um, little plate that squishes a pattern so I'm gonna try and I don't know if you can see this can you see the see there we go it's embossed right so there's a little leaf pattern embossed onto the paper so you emboss with this and then you cut it out with this isn't that awesome? So that made the perfect leaves for these little pumpkins. All right, so I'm gonna use my snail tape. Uh, let's see which side is the, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll this a little bit. Not roll, roll, but just kind of give it a little bit of a curve. There, okay, and I'm gonna put some snail tape on the back. And I'm just going to glue it along kind of the center on the side of the bread. Hi, Sandy. How are you? Enjoying your snow back home? <laughs> Yikes. Did you lose power? There. And this one I'm going to curl the leaf up. All right. There we go. So a big leaf and a little leaf. Next, I put these little, I don't know what they are, tendrils, uh, vine kind of pieces onto this one. And the way I did that, I used lemon lime twist and I used my paper piercer tool again to kind of roll it on. 
it's kind of like paper, no, is it paper towel? I think so. Really, really. So Lisa, do you have Switcher? This program? I just bought it yesterday. And with the exchange rate, it wasn't very pretty, just like Kylie was talking about. <laughs> Yikes. But it is a neat, neat program, I think. So I just had to bite the biscuit. Good. Hiding. Nope. We are good. But they closed Green Acre School this afternoon. Do you work there? I used to work there. I taught. What did I teach? A kind of a literacy kind of support group when literacy support wasn't really a thing. I did that for one year and then they, yeah, paper qu quilling, yeah, that's the one, thank you. You don't have switcher, eh, Lisa? You should give it, you can give it a free trial. Um, and I, I tried, um, uh, a couple different email addresses to extend that a little bit <laughs> but uh, yeah can't have everything that's for sure all right so I made the little vine pieces and now I've got um, some of the wood grain paper so some strips that I had left over from before I'm going just gonna roll up I don't think I need this large of a piece though Let me grab my paper snips We'll just trim this a little. Okay. Just gonna put some snail. Do, do, do. Make it as wide as you like. Probably didn't need to leave it. No, live on driftwood. Oh, our son went there. Okay. Got it. Okay, so there's like our little cylinder there. And I'm gonna attach these vine pieces onto the little cylinder so I'm just using the snail and I'm just going to put it right along the bottom okay see, see how I'm doing that right along the bottom and you can curl it back up if you need to and I'm going to do the same with the other side but I'm going to go the other way on the other side they look like little bug eyes or something <laughs> there all right and now it is glue gun time I have old-fashioned switcher I focus the camera on myself then I fumble around with it and focus on my project hey tons of people do that and it works I, oh man, I, I tried for so long doing that and I, I was getting shots down my cleavage and you know, just, it was bad. So I'm like, I can't do that. I, and well, for the longest time, okay, here's confession time. The longest time I had a broom um, stick between two chairs on my table and I put my camera attached to some rubber bands <laughs> And hung it from that so I didn't even I didn't have a tripod and man try try and have that faced on you and then to turn it back down without oh collapsing the whole table it was, it was just bad so I saw Janet Wakeland uh, doing switcher and using this Archon tripod and I thought oh, that is what I need <laughs> so that is how I got this thing all right, I am awfully close. Let's see, not much of a, a cord here. I'm just actually gonna pull it out. This is all I'm gonna need it for. So I'm just putting glue gun, whoo, glue kind of around the bottom of the cylinder. And I'm just gonna put it on top of that brad so you can't really see it. And there we have it, our little pumpkin. Isn't that cute? So, there. All right, so there's our little pumpkins. They're so cute. 
and the wee little one. This might just be the highlight of my week. Thanks for doing this. Aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> so it's so easy. And even if you don't have, you know, all the Stampin' Up! supplies and whatnot, I mean, just use orange paper or paint yourself an orange piece of paper or whatever. Get some scrap of paper, cut it up into strips, get some brads, you can cut out the, your leaves yourself. I think they're adorable. So there's the project, our first project. All right, now with the second project, I had made these cards earlier and I wanted to show you how I did these pumpkins because they are also super super simple now this paper is driving me nuts because it's just too distracting let's go like this I'm gonna make some awesome all right so here's the cards I made and they both have pumpkins made the exact same way super easy now this card I did kind of a, I think it's called a Z fold because it's got a little Z just like that all right so I'm gonna make it this style but I'm gonna add a few little extras onto the pumpkins um, with Wink Estella okay so I'm gonna get my piece of paper so the card base I'm using is Whisper White and it is cut at, if you take a whole piece of paper, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and just have it the long ways and cut it down at five and a half, you now have two card bases, easy. Then just fold it in half to make it like a little card and you're already ready to roll here. Now the next step to make this little Z fold is you're now gonna take this top layer and fold it to the edge. Now, I have a bone folder. Bone folders are quite handy to make nice creases. Okay, and that is how we're gonna make our little Z. Cute. Okay, next step. I have a piece of pear pizzazz. Oh, sheesh, I didn't write down the measurements you'll be able to figure it out. So just cut a piece that's gonna kind of fit in that little part and I'm gonna glue that down. I'm using my snail tape which goes so nice and quick. All right, there we have it. Now I'm going to stamp a plaid pattern um, with my plaid stamp that I put right here and I'm going to use pear pizzazz so it's going to be a little bit different than the last card because I can't make two cards the same right well you could but I like doing more pear pizzazz now well maybe I should have kept my old scrap piece of paper I'm gonna bring it back I'm gonna lay this on there and remember instead of lifting that huge heavy stamp that's just too hard two five and a quarters would be two by five and a quarter could be okay now I'm just gonna lay this down onto the stamp because that's so much easier. Flip over your old scrappy piece of paper and don't get any mess on your hands. Unless you're me, you know. <laughs> tends to go everywhere. Try to make sure you kind of rub around the, all the outsides of that little piece of paper. All right, I think that feels good. There we go. Now I'm gonna clean that off a little later. Okay, so that piece is finished. I'm going to glue that onto my pear pizzazz. Of 
Gotta go, Jen, but I love your style. Stay warm. Thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight. It was nice to chit chat with you. Talk to you again. All right, so there's the pear pizzazz. Now the next step is to put on kind of this, it's gonna be kind of like a little frame for our pumpkins. Now did I go this way? I can't remember. Let me check with my old one. This way, okay. So I'm gonna know, note, I'm just gonna put a little tick with my finger here, where I need to put the glue because you don't want to put glue on the whole back of this otherwise your card's going to be stuck so what's everybody else drinking tonight i've got my water got a headache what are you guys having diane you went quiet on us okay and i'm just going to kind of stick that into the middle there Next, I've got this little white piece that's going to go over top, but I think to jazz it up a little bit, I want to put some um, ground and some sky on this one. I didn't do that on the last one, so let's let's jazz her up a little bit. So the um, the blue, I might have enough blue from before, so I'm just going to give it a a go. is I don't like how that looks so I'm gonna flip it over it's kind of uh, getting a little bit scratchy so I need to almost replace the blue I think I said that the last time <laughs> last week red rose oh yes red So Sandy, how long have you uh, known uh, Lori for then? A long time? Apple cinnamon tea and chips, my bad. <laughs> this is my movie night watching. Oh, sheesh. That's some sad entertainment to tell you. Okay, so I added a little sky with some clouds there. All right, now I'm gonna glue that on to the card base, that orange piece. Guys, even no, leave me alone at eight. <laughs> Funny. Oh dear. There. So our piece is on. Now to get rolling with. Oh, one more piece. Along here, I had this little uh, corrugated piece, and I'll show you how I did that because um, it's just one of those thick. Um, embossing folders now I had to because I want to show you what happens when you do it one way and you do it another way so I'm just gonna grab my big shot here oh sheesh things are heavy so normally when you're putting through one of those thick kind you only need your base and one plate so when you put this through and gotta go stay warm all right see you sandy talk to you again what's diane drinking she gone already all right so put the plate over top and run it through i always go twice because it's my thing Make sure it got done. I don't know. But as you will see, it breaks. And it rips. And there's holes in between. So that's no good. We can't have that. So what they suggest... Let me get this little piece out here. What they should suggest is that you wet your paper first. And then I think it allows, hi, Donna. Almost forgot, hi. <laughs> Glad you remembered. So what they suggest, and, I, and Donna, if you have any other embossing folders that kind of, um, kind of 
rip almost because it's so tight I guess spritz it with water first it doesn't have to be soaked or anything but hi Donna did you get your case okay so now that I've spritzed the paper I'm gonna run it through Okay, here we go. Okay, let's move this off to the side. And as you can see, it stays together. So that is a big clue. All right, let's get this grummy pieces, piece of paper out of the way. So now I'm gonna put this, glue this, along the bottom there of our little pumpkin patch. Now I'm gonna sort of see where I need to cut it. I didn't cut it ahead of time because I knew that because of the paper being squished like that, it would shrink it. So I kinda of wanted to do that after. Okay, and I think it's gonna go about there. So I'm just gonna cut off this piece. Maybe we can use that for the pumpkin. Um, stems. All right, now since this is so wobbly and wibbly, you can use snail or if you have ever used tear and tape, now would be a good time to use it. Super, super sticky. Oh, see now it's too big. I squished it because I put the tape on it. Cut a little more off again. You know what this is going to turn into, right? Just like cutting your bangs. Start cutting on one end. Ah. Let's see, and now I've got glue there, so it's not wanting to. We'll just put it down and be done with it. Okay. Good enough. Okay, there's our little patch round. And now for our pumpkins. All right. So what I used are the two smallest um, ovals in the stitched framelit set. So I cut three of each color because you need three to make a pumpkin or an apple or a squash or, I don't know, whatever you want there. And this time I'm gonna actually use crumb cake to kind of emboss or, or um, color around the edges to make it look a little more, um, I don't know, farmish. I love the fall colors, yes. Yes, they're so pretty. I hope this just doesn't make it look dirty. <laughs> I didn't try this ahead of time. There's always the other side. Um, let me see. Hmm, I don't love it. I think I'm going to leave good alone. All right, so I'm actually going to flip that sucker and we'll pretend that I didn't mess that up. All right, so uh, what you do is just put a little strip of snail at the top of one of those oval shapes and stick the other one kind of to it. So you kind of have that little thing and then you're going to put nail on the back of the third one and put it right into the middle. And that's how you make pumpkin. Pretty fancy, hey? So I'm going to do it again with the smaller size. So just put a little snail along the top, kind of make like a V, an upside down V, or bunny ears or, oops, 
whatever you want to call them. And snail on the third piece. And it goes right over top in the middle. There you have it. All right. So now we had some of those ex that extra crumb cake. So I'm actually going to cut some stems out of that because it'll look kind of cute with the bends and the ripples. All right. I'm going to put some snail on the back of the pumpkin. And there. Attach that little piece and once again I'm going to do a little thicker stem for the bigger pumpkin. And put it on the back of there. Okay. Now I know stems are not always even so I'm just going to trim off a little so it's not straight. There we go. Now, on the one uh, card, what I did, I don't know if you can see it, but I added the Wink of Stella dolls. I don't know what the official term is going to be, but that's what I want to call it. All right, so I just put your little um, pumpkins there. Make sure you don't have anything in the way. You're going to get out your Wink of Stella. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Because you want to have some ink. Do you all have a wink of Stella? Whoop. Okay. And so you can use your finger or you can use something else, but just. Kind of tap it onto your pumpkins. And it just adds a little bit of a, a little shimmer for one. Who doesn't like glitter? And. It adds that little bumpy texture that pumpkins have. I love it. All right, let me put the case back on, a little lid back on there. Now I'm just going to let this dry for a minute. You could always use your heat tool also to kind of um, speed up the drying process. I'm just going to wipe this off before I get it everywhere. Just use my old baby wipe. Okay, now I have to think about what, actually, I know what I need to do. I'm going to tie little green ribbons to look like the leaves off the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna take some old green, old olive ribbon that I had laying around and I'm just gonna tie a little knot. And cut it off. Okay, and one more. And I cut those off. Good. Okay, now I'm going to take a glue dot, oh, which I probably don't have. I don't have out. Okay, I'm going to do that the lazy man's way. And just put a little snail. And did I put the... No, I put them down. Put this kind of at the top of the pumpkin. Kind of hanging down like that. So it looks like a little bit of a leaf. And that actually feels dry, so the Wink of Stella doesn't take long. I just wanted to make sure the bigger globs didn't uh, run or make a big wet mess. All right, there's our little pumpkins. I'm going to put them onto the card now. Uh, what I did, let's see, so I did the biggest one first. I put a little bit on that uh, stem there. Okay, now for this one, I kind of want it to pop out a little bit, so I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of that one. Good error. My desk, I cleaned it off multiple times a day, and it's still <laughs> a disaster. 
I don't know what happens. I'm starting to find these dimensionals in the hallway of her condo. <laughs> so I need to be a little more careful with hitting the garbage. All right, and so they're going on top. Now for a little saying. I'm liking these itty bitty greetings. They're kind of like the new teeny tiny wishes and uh, they're lots of fun. So the last one I did was with gratitude. So this one, hmm, happy day, have a lucky day for you, sent with love. Trick or treat. I think I'm just gonna put happy day. That could be for many different things. And I haven't even used that one yet. Oh, I must have, sorry. Thought I hadn't used that one yet. Okay, let's find a little block. Oh, I was totally gonna to put lines on this again. I forgot, I was gonna put lines on that uh, check pattern, oh well add in the, the green and the orange to that pattern oh well all right and the last one I did with soft suede so I think I'm gonna do that again because it was a nice darker color to make sure it showed up so happy day I'm just gonna practice on my scrap Ooh, it's very light okay here we go There's the card you made. So I just wanted to show you how you how I made those pumpkins. It's kind of a pumpkin kind of day, apparently. Made our little pumpkins. There we have it. All right. Thank you for stopping by, you guys. And I will talk to you again later. If you have any questions or want any of these products that I use today, please let me know. Because this week, especially if you put in, a, in an order, you can get into a draw for a $100 gift certificate for Stampin' Up. And so I will put in whatever you want for a hundred bucks. So um, now I give you five, sorry, the whole reason why I said that was that a way you can earn ballots to get put in the draw is I will give you five ballots if you put in an order over $30. So you can do that with me or you can do that online. But if you do put it in online, which will make it come right to your house, actually either way, we'll make, I'll make it come straight to your house. Just please use the hostess code, which is KJNTM99X. And that way I'll be able to see that you put in an order and I will need to reward you for that. I'll send you a thank you card. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll talk again.